Hello, my name is John Witt and this will be a short video on just some basic conditioning for the hands and shoulders. So if you can't do a push-up and you're challenged with it, um, Poncho and Noah and I will help you in terms of, of learning that. So push-ups at the wall are, are something that, you know... You okay, so here's a short video. My name is John Witt. It's a short video for working at the wall, say there's just no chance you can do down dog. It's very difficult for you to do. There's some really basic things that can help with that. Um, I'll, I'll use the wall as an example. Um, Cause if you have tight hamstrings, tight shoulders, it definitely affects the way that you could be inverted on your hands. So I'm gonna be at the wall. Just a basic series is that I'm walking my feet to the wall and walking my arms up the wall. And here, I'm, I'm purposely staying away from, I'm leaning to the wall, but I want to stay away from the wall, if that makes sense. So I'm not just falling or dumping into my chest. I'm actively pushing into the wall, and that's what's helping to stretch out my chest and my shoulders. Now your hands can be wider than your shoulders, and that can be a nice thing as well to do, right? But then I'm coming back where my hands are just straight up, I could come up on the toes. Um, if you have very tight feet, it's better to stay flat with your feet. So even this is stretching out your calf muscle. So I'm going to take my hands, so the height of my hips are slightly higher than my hips, and I'm going to step back where I'm at a 90 degree angle. So I'm pulling the hips back in space. I could bend the knees. I'm pushing into the wall, right? I'm keeping, you know, if I want to make it more shoulder specific, you can kind of see how I'm falling into the floor. But what you can do is keep the ribs in and push strong through the hands to open up the shoulders. And then walking back to the wall, walking back up, stretching the arms up. Right? Again, take the hands wider if you need to. Step back a little bit further and lean to the wall, but resist going to the wall fully. And that's, that's something that you, I use in terms of like a handstand. That's what's really good for the shoulders and handstand. Not that this video is about that, but I'm going to take the hands to the height of the hips and then I'm going to step back again. My hands are turned out. I'm bending my knees. I'm keeping my ribs in. I'm pushing strong into the wall, right? To get the rotation in my shoulders. Then I'm walking forward. And I'm just going to stand at the wall to end this series. So I'm just standing at the wall, which is a great practice in and itself. And just see what may not be touching the wall. Might be one hip, might be one shoulder. Super basic, but a very good thing in terms of reorganizing the body. Um, it's easy to assume that you don't need this. But it's, it's quite um, revealing when I teach this to someone that you know doesn't necessarily know that they they could be standing better or they could be walking better so just a, a basic series i hope that helped you could let me know how it goes if you have any questions you could always um, direct message me and i could answer your questions you could send me a video and that's always easier to help someone with you know whether it be an injury or you're just really struggling with something in terms of practice you could always uh, let me know if there's other things that you'd like to see in these videos. You know, like, subscribe, um, share with your friends, your family. It helps my cause. All right. You, if you haven't used them before, there's a very good way in teaching the motor skills and, and really giving you a, a lot more um, ease because being on your hands or being on a chair. So I think wall... And then, you know, and then being on your knees, you know, those types of push-ups, those are, those are two ways of doing it. But even the floor can be too difficult. So I basically come to the wall. My hands are at the wall. My hands are slightly lower than my shoulders. My hands are turned out. So by turning out, it's a lot less stress on the wrist. So Pancho's just observing, right? Okay. So I'm just, I'm here. And what I want to do is I want to move my upper body towards my hands. And then I'm going to push quite strong away from the wall. But where you can really get stronger is the slow descent. 
and then pushing up. Uh, when, when people do these, or any type of exercise like this, is they, they do them so fast or they don't really connect that it's, it's not really helping them. But when I come down, I'm pushing, I'm coming back down, I'm pushing straight up, and I'm doing enough where it's, t you know, it's taxing, I'm tired, right? And then as I'm going, you know, you, you, in order to do like a proper push-up on the floor, you really do have to move past that line of the wrist, and then I'm coming back up. But I would, you could keep a count, right? Start with like 10, 20, even 30, and you could do multiple sets. And a good way of doing this is to do the multiple times through the day. So, especially if you have an injury, because if you do too many reps with anything, the next day you'll, you'll feel more inflammation, um, and that can be obviously not a good thing for you. But some light stretching of your chest and your shoulders in combination of this, or hanging from a bar, right, is very, very good for the shoulders, and you know, I can make a video on that. So I hope that helped. Really basic, but and with this, people won't do enough of them, and they'll, they'll say like, well, this would never ever help me with a push-up, but in, in reality, you just have to do enough of them. So you could go four seconds down, four to six seconds down, and then about one to two seconds just push up strong, and then that'll help get you into being able to push again. So if you want to be able to do moderate.